I'm joined now by Dr. Venkat Narayan, the recipient of the Kelly West Award for Outstanding Achievement in Epidemiology. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Diana. And I know you're giving the Kelly West lecture, Type 2 Diabetes, Why We're Winning the Battle But Losing the War. Provocative title, what does that mean? Well, let me start with the good news. We are winning the battle. Uh, in the last 10 to 12 years, uh, nationally in the United States, we are beginning to see very impressive declines in rates of complications among people with diabetes. Uh, for example, rates of myocardial infarction have been going down in people with diabetes, so too rates of stroke, end-stage renal disease, amputations, and hyperglycemic deaths. All of these are fantastic news. And personally, I think there are many reasons that have uh, contributed to this, but I'd like to emphasize three of them. Firstly, all of our investment in the science of diabetes its pathophysiology, both from basic to clinical science to epidemiology and to prevention, have all paid, are beginning to pay. Secondly, uh, thanks to CDC and to NIH and to ADA, we have been emphasizing translation research. That is, how do we take research and proven interventions and get them implemented in practice? How do we improve quality of care in practice? Thirdly, we've been monitoring the path to progress uh, thanks to uh, the DQIP and Alliance set of indicators, uh, the ADA's provider recognition program, and major efforts from the CDC at the national level to monitor improvements in, uh, in diabetes care. So I think the battle that we are winning is reducing the complications among people with diabetes, uh, which I think is impressive. Okay, so why are we losing the war? <laughs> that is a very important question. Uh, although the rate of complications are going down, uh, since 1980, the prevalence and incidence of diabetes, type 2 diabetes in the United States, uh, have been going up. Uh, which means that even if the rate of complications go down, the numbers of people, absolute numbers of people with complications in the system will continue to rise as a result of a higher proportion of people having diabetes, surviving diabetes, and aging of the population. And the implication of this is we will have a lot more people with diabetes having heart attacks, strokes, end-stage renal disease, amputations, etc. And this directly impacts the healthcare costs of the country. To give you, put things in perspective, uh, diabetes is now the leading cause of rising healthcare uh, costs in the United States, particularly in the Medicare population. So what will it take to turn the tide, to take all of the science that you're hearing here and translate it into policy and clinical practice? I think, firstly, uh, we should take credit for the fact that we've been able to reduce the rate of complications. That shows that we are capable of major improvements at national level in a public health sense. So what can we learn from that? I think we need to now uh, start emphasizing the role of prevention of type 2 diabetes primarily prevent it. And for this, there are a couple of things that are very important. Firstly, uh, thanks to fantastic research in the last 15 years, there is strong evidence that good rigorous lifestyle in interventions implemented in people with pre-diabetes can prevent the rate of progression to diabetes. Now it's a matter of implementing it you know, nationwide. Uh, the first step to implementation is the fact that 90% of people with pre-diabetes remain undetected. So we need a national screening policy which is able to detect those people. And as we speak, the United States uh, Prevention Task Force is deliberating on a new set of recommendations. And I would urge them to broaden the set of recommendations so that all people with pre-diabetes can be identified and brought into the system. And then we require good infrastructure and resources to deliver the type of lifestyle interventions that were done in the diabetes prevention program. Uh, so I think that would be one important strategy. But that still only takes care of part of the problem because in spite of that, we will still see an increase in incidence of diabetes uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's not a complete solution. It's only attacking those with pre-diabetes. What about the others who will eventually develop diabetes? And more importantly, we are seeing a global explosion of diabetes worldwide in every country of the world, including low and middle income countries of the world, uh, and particularly in rural parts of, uh, of developing countries. And we might think 
uh, uh, that we, we are not isolated from that. Because just look uh, at the US population today, a high proportion of newer immigrants are from those countries. And regardless, what the US does impacts the rest of the world, and what happens in the rest of the world impacts us. It's a huge challenge, and all of your research is helping us maybe one day win the war. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you.